Welcome to Tell You Later, the show where you learn so little about so much and vice versa. Sincere thanks to all those who support us on Patreon. See the full list at the end of the show. Oh, yeah. By the way, there's always room for more. And don't forget to like and subscribe to their channel. We haven't got a title song for this show, so we're singing this thing instead. Okay. It's really just a substitute, nonetheless. The melody may stay in your head. Oh, I hope so. Cause it's a tune. It's a tune. You'll love to croon. You'll love to croon. Ah, but there's one thing you should know. We have to confess we do not possess a title song for this show. Ain't it peculiar? Believe it or not. We haven't got a title song for this show. Oops. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tell You Later. Thanks all you patrons out there who make it happen and those who purchase merch on Merchulator. That's swell because you might even want one of these cool mugs. We have a new design, by the way. I don't know. By the time you hear this, we could have five new designs. I don't know. But back by uh, popular demand is Mr. Steve O'Donnell. You wonder why? Well, no. When I was a kid and I would see a, a, a Donald Duck comic that would say reprinted by popular demand, I knew that there had been no popular yeah, but, demand. But you know what? And I think that's the same but, situation. But here. let me tell you. No. The truth is this. I'm going to let the fan. We have a little fan there because it's hot. It's summer. We need to, but it's a silent fan, so you can't hear it applaud, applauding. Ah, uh, so it's sort of like a silent fan who made the popular demand. Yeah, but you know who actually popular demanded you? It's been almost a year since you've been on the show. Yes, that was uh, a bittersweet kind of fun to spend uh, those hours with you and uh, Will Ryan. Yeah, because Will adored you. Oh, well, we were friends for 45 years. <laughs> and he couldn't stop talking about you. All he wanted was you to come on the show desperately. And I guess it was in November, episode 40 and 41. We finally got you, and he was so excited. He also wanted a friend of yours to sing, I think. Oh, maybe Mickey Yamashita, who yes. has a lovely operatic... Uh, he wanted her... To well, she's that, that odd little um, Venn diagram of beautiful operatic lyric soprano voice and really great sense of humor. Like, she's really, really funny. That's what... Yeah. Uh, that's so what she's done some, some, some comical opera effects and so on. Yes, she was, she was part of that Will universe. He somehow would find people like that and have them around. Yes. Am I sitting, Crow of One, am I sitting good? Because I feel like I'm upstage. No, upstaging is when you're behind, oh. right? I'm, I'm forward staging you. Yes, but know. you are stage left. Or are you stage right? I don't. The turkey says you'll gobble up this book real fast. KatieLee.com. <laughs> Didn't we start to sing that that great old gospel song on one of the uh, on one of the old recordings? The uh, I just got to heaven and I can't sit down. Can't sit down. No, I can't sit down. I just got to heaven and I can't sit down. It's it, also it's like a great idea that yeah, yeah, if you got to heaven and it was kind of like the way they had told you with yeah. streets paved with gold and yeah. angels you and go pearly explore, gates. Yeah, right? you're not gonna sit down. You're gonna take a walk around. I have a feeling that's what Will's doing. He's been running around. <laughs> yes, he's restless. Down. And I know he's really happy that you came back because oh. he wanted uh her name is me. Mickey, Mickey Yamashita. He yes. wanted her, I think, to sing her our theme song in operatic oh, form. Oh, that's right. right? I, uh, oh, yes, that's right. And I think she agreed to do that. That still may 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 uh, happen. I hope. Really? Yes. It, it's, I have It is an infuriating, met her. catchy theme song. Yeah. Well, um, how, did, what, how do you think she could do that? Well, she has. Because you have a personal in with her, right? Uh, I am acquainted. Okay. She does have a home studio, so even if she yeah. couldn't make the incredibly long drive all the way here to do you identify where you originally. And the Tell You Later Studios in Torrance. Yes. Um, she has a, a home studio. She mm -hmm. might be able to do it there. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it might be fun to if she wants to goof off, and maybe you, can you sing with her? Are you a singer? I'm not a singer, um, but maybe I could do a sort of, um, you know, how you would Can get you spoken word. Can you scat operatically? <laughs> you know what? what? Oh, 
If Ella Fitzgerald or or uh, somebody like that tried to lead an audience in a scat sing along, you know, we should go, you know, be bop be bop boop bop shabam, be bop be bop boop bop shabam, skittily abby bop. By the way, Will Ryan, among his thousands of other uh, abilities, could do a pretty good Popeye. Hi. And he could do that hop bop skitty up bop skitty up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you were friends with, um, I imagine, Steve Martin. Okay, so let me bring you guys up to speed. Steve O'Donnell. Yeah, I worked with Steve Martin. No, I wrote I, for David Letterman, me, and you are a humorist, right? Can I refer to you as a humor a humor writer? How do you call yeah, it humor? I've, I've done, Not this I've humorist. I've done comedy shows. I've, done, I've written on comedy shows. I, I started out as a sort of... I suppose a lightweight kind of journalist. I wrote a lot of newspaper and magazine articles for city magazines. Then I kind of worked my way up, and it occurs to me that a lot of the subject matter for the magazine pieces were sort of cartoonish related. Really? I did a, like what? I did a piece for Feature Magazine that was like the 50th anniversary of Popeye. Oh. And then a few years later, a piece for Life Magazine. You see, I'm moving up. Oh, real? Uh, wow, on that's a big deal. the 50th anniversary of uh, Bugs Bunny. Who I'm a yeah. remain a big appreciator of. Um, so you must have had that in, in in common with Will. Yes, yes. Because, the, but you met writing with Will originally, at a, right? At a greeting card company, I it was my first day on the job. I met him in the uh, in the cafeteria. Well, what amounted to the cafeteria? You know, a little room set aside with, with a the vending, vending machine. Machines, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was big time. But. Um, we spent several hours talking, and I was thinking, wow, if the job's going to be like this, <laughs> this, this will not be Do we be work at bad. all? <laughs> there, some work did show up in the months ahead, but it was wonderfully fun. At first, I thought, well, this is odd to be writing greeting cards, but then I found it a much more um, rewarding setting than you'd think, because there were a lot of cartoonists, and there were a lot of mm. other... Well, there weren't that many writers, but there were a lot of cartoonists and artists of different kinds. What and were the qualifications? What did they ask you before you got hired to do that? What's the fangirl up to this week? To find out, stay tuned till after the credits. Well, I had had a couple of print pieces already. I had um, had some cartoons and writing in the College Humor magazine. Did I you would, draw? Were you an artist? Oh, Are you an artist as well? Oh, not very good. I'm a very... In fact, uh, uh, there, there were several fairly famous cartoonists that worked with American Greetings, including Tom Wilson, who did uh, Ziggy. Ziggy, that's how I met Will, told, through his yes, Ziggy. At, at, at one point, he was always very encouraging me, but he'd say, oh, well, you're no cartoonist, <laughs> but you are a writer. And, you know... Oh, I, and, and that's how one that. finds one's that. path yeah, in yeah, life, yeah. right? You do yes. follow the road less troublesome yes. than you, the one that you pays you, right? You wait for right? people to identify who you are for your own edification. Um, no, I, I, I doodled. And, and it, it was useful over the years I, I, on several uh, late night TV shows. Both at uh, David Letterman, who was the first person to hire me, and then at Jimmy really? Kimmel, Jimmy That's Kimmel the first down place the line. You got that was hired? the very first TV job I ever had. No fool. And, and how, how? Wow! What can I ask? What year that was? Nineteen eighty-two. Eighty-two. Wow. I'd been working in the NBC tape library, and I'd gotten that job because I'd worked at the Museum of Broadcasting, which was just a a perfect, um, low-paying, but perfect uh, spiritually yeah. job for me. But how so? Well, because it was both history and pop culture, and those things have always been been um, subjects of, of um, profound that, interest. And that's kind of what you wrote about. Yes. Right? And um, I also did the newsletters at, uh, at the Museum of Broadcasting. And... Um, Anyway, is that I made like at the RCA building, or where's the, the Museum, Museum of, of Broadcasting? Broadcasting? It was a couple blocks away from uh, uh, Thirty Rock, uh, on One East Fifty Third Street, and I think oh. it still stands. It has gone through several name changes. But like, are you from Ohio? I'm from Ohio. Was it fun moving to New York? Uh, yes, scary, uh, but yeah. uh, but fun also. Yeah, there were a lot of there are a lot of things in retrospect. I look back and go, oh, I guess that took some nerve. I had done a lot of hitchhiking as a teenager, Whoa. Uh, probably about 40,000 miles uh, uh, in almost every state 
east of the Mississippi. That's like Jack Kerouac. Yeah, oh, I, I loved reading Jack Kerouac. <laughs> then I sort of went off Jack Kerouac. Now I'm kind of back, back. to Jack Kerouac. That's the way, Shout out yeah, to Jack yeah, Kerouac. Yeah, who himself did not drive, by the way. Uh, really? Yeah, it's like finding out Isaac Asimov and Ray Bradbury hated airplane Oh, but his, book, his book make it, made it sound like he was Yes, driving. yes. Oh, for God. He lived with his mother in his middle age back oh. in Lawrence, Massachusetts or wherever it was. Well, it sure was fun reading. Yes. Yeah. They, they're, um, yeah. Yes, a lot of the cool cats turn out to have been uh, a, a little more, um, uh, less cool. In a, in a previous episode, we mentioned um, the cartoon, uh, the cartoonist, the, the Charles Schultz. No, the grumpy guy, Pete, 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 um, Pete Grumpy. No, P. That's his last name, P. The, no, the guy who also I think lived in an apartment and was pretty isolated. Um, we just talked. I just saw it on the. Um, well, um, no, you know the guy who wrote the very the life. They made a movie about him. Oh, Picar. Yes, Picar. Oh, literally Picar. Yes. Yes. Though he himself didn't do any drawing. The, uh, all his all his comics were drawn by uh, cartoonist friends, many of whom worked at American Greetings because he was, was a Clevelander cartoon? as well. Well, he he put out a Harvey Picar. Yes, he put out a, a a series of of comic books that were autobiographical about his own modest but interesting and colorful life over a period of. 25 years or so called American Splendor. American Splendor. And even the title was a little ironic because he was a sort of a shabby, cheap character who... Uh, um, kind of schlub. Yeah, but but also a, a big jazz fan, a big uh, a reader. Uh, and did you know him? Yes, yeah. and we shared some unusual taste. Like, he was delighted that I loved George Aid and Ben Hecht and people that aren't really read very much anymore. Ah. And we could spend a lot and of time And how did talking. you meet him? Um, I met him when he came on The Letterman Show. I spent a certain amount of time thumping for him to be a guest, but he was a hard sell because, as with you, <laughs> I, I'd, I'd say le to Dave Letterman, this would be a great guest. He's a very interesting guy. He has a day job as a file clerk in a Veterans Administration hospital, but he writes these autobiographical comic books and they're kind of funny and dark and strange and Dostoevsky like in their own way and Letterman said alright so he draws the comics and I went no no he doesn't draw them and then of course it would be complicate things further but uh, there were several people on the Letterman staff who were big Picar fans a guy named Max Pross who was another writer okay. but we kept pushing and, I, and then Dave as he, as he um, w would uh, sometimes uh, in his largesse uh, decided, oh, all right, we'll give it a shot. And uh, Picar turned out to be a very good type of guest because he did not know the rules of television at all. You know, he'd be in the guest chair looking around, you know, ill at ease, like myself. Uh, yeah. And, 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 and Dave would say, oh, but you like being here with us, don't you, Harvey? You like me. And Harvey would go, man, I don't even know you. <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to pretend everyone's great intimate close friends nobody like shows. coached you didn't coach him before he came no, on the show no, just no, let's, no. let's just let him out of his cage and see what happens yeah and he was how did you start to describe him cranky little grumpy yes little yes shlubby. he was definitely cranky and also very cheap he always he wanted to make he would he would circle the block in the midtown to get the free sample candy bars that the girl would be handing out on fifth avenue you know? sounds like a mutual friend of ours Oh, you think Will Ryan? Is Possibly. That uh, but Will was a, an amazing combination of warm-heartedness and open-heartedness and also just thrift. Yeah. Yeah, no, in fact, when I think back to when I first met him, there were several not quite clear things that were... he Like, I think he was living in his car, but mm. I don't think he actually had to spend that many nights in the car because there was always some friend or girlfriend or, or also some... Open couch somewhere. Right, or just some sort of Medici-like patron. I remember there was a very nice um, couple, Tom and Violet Frayne, who had a home in a nice Cleveland suburb, and he would sort of crash with them for a while. Yeah, I um, wonder, oh, just because he was saving money, maybe, to move to California? I guess so, yes. And he, he did appear in this sort of uh, comical Smothers Brothers-like uh, cabaret act called Willio and yes. Filio with Will Barron, or with Phil, Barron. Phil Barron, wonderfully uh, funny, but also a fantastically beautiful singing voice. And Will had a very lovely... Do you know what Phil does now? Are you aware? 
I believe he's been a canter. Yeah, for he's many a canter decades. in, in the must, San Fernando Valley, I, and we I, hope to have him on here one of these I'm days. I'm sure it will start a, a stampede of conversions to the Jewish faith. <laughs> Well, it, well, Phil also did Piglet's voice oh, uh, when they yes. were doing Welcome to Pooh Corner. Because yes. Phil and uh, Will kind of went to Disney, mm -hmm. wrote songs together. When they came to California, mm -hmm. they did stuff. I So many things I don't know. It's like, if you're like me and some of the other people who spoke at, at Will's memorial, it's like he, Nancy said... Oh, oh! You've got your new uh, tell you later tote bag. Is cute? I love yeah, it. Did you get that at Merchelator? I sure did. Merchelator. It's so cute. Com. It, look, super tell cute. ya later bag, and That's it's got awesome. everything in it. Do I they got... have hats? She, he had so many people thought he was their best friend, oh. but so many people didn't know. We only knew his little segment. Yes, right. Like he, we, we could be feel really close and still not know that Will had all this other stuff yes. going on. He was large hearted, large spirited, but also just uh, uh, gregarious. Yes, and with just lots of. Uh, activities and interests. If he were simply the cartoonist he was, or if he were simply the the, the songwriter that he was, or if he was simply the kind of a that would be character, enough, right? colorful voice actor, that would be enough too. But he was all those things at once, and uh, and 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 more than that too. It's kind of like Will epitomized the Dayenu song. Oh. Do you know Dayenu? Yes, I, a, a, a Jewish concept of... Uh, yeah, that would be the, enough. Yes, if God was, just had let us get yes. out of, you know, slavery, that would have been enough. If yes. he had just done this, that had just given us Torah, that would have been yes. enough. Yeah, so I, I think that's a really good uh, uh, explanation, description. Well, anyone who knew him was glad to have had him as a friend, and uh, just because he was so... Color. Also, the, and he was an enigma, an thought. enigma wrapped in a mystery, is is Woody mm -hmm. Allen would say. I just thought of him as more of a riddle. <laughs> a riddle. But yeah. um, it, but it's one of those people where if you just say his name, you'll start to smile because he was funny and sweet and playful. I mean, and and. Uh, a lot of people, uh, words would come that would, you know, like, oh, he was, he worked clean, he was wholesome, he was uh, honest, he was, he was, you know, old fashioned. But see, those words would be like down at like 150 and 151 or so if I were making a list, because yeah. those were true, but it, 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 they sound so limiting in a way. Yeah. He was, he was inventive and zany and brilliant and um, spontaneously uh, uh, quick and entertaining. And, and uh, uh, clever with Yes, and um, a rare gift for Melody. The fact that he had, you know, usually you hear somebody's written a thousand songs, it's like, well, maybe one or two of them are good. But All most of his good. songs are fun. And Speaking have, of which, yeah. let me just interject here. First of all, because I don't want to lose my, you're pointing out some really good things. For those of you who are just catching up, maybe this is your first episode. We started this show with Will sitting here and me and now uh will's gone on to greater and greater things higher things and so we're he's you know, living in that big car in the, it's sky. In the big car in the sky and and we're reminiscing but will and i worked on adventures and odyssey for 35 years together and the people at focus on the family put together a tribute for him oh yes and i don't think you heard it but i i put off listening to it if you guys I don't know where to find I'll see if I can find it and put it in the notes. I'll definitely give it to you. And they said, we're putting together this thing. I thought, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. It will just upset me. But when you said about the smile, as soon as I started to hear people talking, I, and they were playing clips of him, which I thought would make me feel melancholy and sad. And it, I just listened <laughs> to the whole thing until the very end with the biggest smile on my face. Yes. Yeah, he was. He, he, you just can't help being delighted yes. and, and mesmerized. And Even fascinated. when he's doing a villain, <laughs> he was entertaining. Yes, exactly. So if, if we can, if I can find a link for that, I'll put it yes, in there and, and you would enjoy it. I think I did see it. I know that there were several such tributes in the... Uh, but it wasn't written. It's people talking and it, it's recordings of Will. 
Too. Yes, I think it was really? online. I, oh, it, but okay. there were probably several such things. But the but shout uh, out but to was Nathan very well Googler. Edited. I mean, it was. It oh, was, he spent yeah. months editing yeah. and finding clips from yeah. outtakes and different things and interviews with people. So, yeah, if you can, if you maybe you did hear it, it was terrific. Well, he's very wonderful. By the way, speaking of he and Phil, I had the odd experience. I, I'm uh, the ninth of ten brothers and sisters, and I have like thousands and thousands of nieces and nephews. Wow. And once I was at uh, my brother. Bill's home, and he had two um, uh, his two kids, uh, Darby and Sarah, were playing with their Teddy Ruxpin dolls, ah. and the dolls started talking. You know, they had the voice uh, function, and I went, "Wait a second, blah, 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 blah. I knew it was Will and Phil <laughs> yes. doing the. I went, oh, "That is funny." Yeah, and I, I worked on that too with them, actually. Yes, I didn't know you then, but no, I would you have just didn't. said that sounds like, like a Katie. professional humorous voice. Yeah, no, that was fun. And then they ended up doing a, a TV show about it. And actually, one of the one of the props that we didn't play with yet, uh, Will bought a... They came up with a new version of Teddy mm -hmm. Ruxpin. A teeny little one, not as clunky, oh. not as... I wish I still had my Teddy Ruxpin. It kind of would scare you a little bit. It's when animatronics were kind oh, of... Yeah. And, you know, you could hear yeah. that... Uh, the motor. Yeah, even ventriloquist dummies. There's, there's a you, sort of a... A yeah. sort of disturbing, um, well, like clowns. Almost every any anything that's sort of a, a simulacrum of humanity, but uh, a little a, a simulacrum. Little, a simulacrum. How do you spell that? Sim U L crumb. And with a B? No, it's uh, I I, I'm, I think it's S I M U Sim U L A. I have to look that up. Just means a, a likeness. Similarity. A, well, yeah. you know what? So, and then you mentioned songs. So when you were on. Oh yes. When you were on before, you reminded Will that he had written a song called "Good Old Outer Space." But just because it seemed representative of a thousand types of songs he'd written, where the song was not only funny, it had a very weird premise that there'd be like a sort of bar where the astronauts <laughs> would all <laughs> hang out, Star and, they, Wars, and they'd sing their right? sort of the Irish, group songs, the like, Irish, uh, yeah, like Star they were. Warsian. What are they? What planet do they live on in Star Wars? Uh, I'll tell you later. Tell You Later is a Patreon-driven entertainment show. So what are you waiting for? Come on over. Join us at patreon.com front slash tell you later. If you like to smell the cactus bloom, welcome to Cactus County. And loads and loads of elbow room, welcome to Cactus County. If you like your mornings fresh and clear, welcome to Cactus County. And a pleasing breeze throughout the year, welcome to Cactus County. Now if you're tired of wandering or land or sea or foam, Let's go this way. Harlequin Theater! I love the Harlequin Theater! Who are these? Whoa. Who are these people? Hey, I'm friends with her. Did you know I'm close personal friends with her? No way. Yeah. Uh-huh. With her? Yeah, we went to Disneyland wait, together. Wait, can I touch you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We went to Disneyland together. Yeah, we did. I bet you had fun. We did. We had so much fun. I think she had fun too. Oh, I know she would. If she was with you, she had fun. Yeah, for sure. You know, some people don't know who they are, so we have a little game. I know who she is. Ta-da! But Jean, oh, look at hi. Hi, Eugene. Hi. I love this. Kids don't know what Foley is. You know, he's the guy that puts sound into silent films. What? Try. Let's see what it might sound like. Oh, you're walking on, what about this brick? That sounds different. What about that wood over there? Oh, look at, oh man, you were clumping. How about the grass? Totally different sound. Yeah, this is right. awesome, I know. But you know what, oh, oh. I saw Jingle Bells. I haven't seen Christmas already. You know what's no. really fun? We have this beautiful wardrobe. Do you think it's just in here just because it's just a wardrobe in here just because? Well, you said there was a secret room, so my guess is that might be the secret room. Okay, you know what? Come closer. Come closer.